This is the ideal space that you want your team to be in. It's in that collaborating mode. So how do we get there? So I have a friend, Sarah, that stepped into a new role as a leader. There was just a lot going on with this team. Trust had been broken with the previous leaders. They didn't really respect or trust the leaders above Sarah either, but they also didn't trust each other. I mean, there was just, it was a tough place to be. It was, it was a tough situation, but she did a really good job of taking time to be empathetic and understand what was going on and ended up creating a culture where people were able to have conversations, where they were able to start working through things. And it's, it's amazing because when you start, when you have this team where things just are, it feels like it's falling apart, nobody really gets along, nobody's really communicating, like there's clicks that are forming, it can be overwhelming as a new leader. And there are probably times where you ask yourself, like, what did I sign up for? What did I get myself into? Can I go back to what I did before? Like, some of you have probably been in this sort of a situation. But the, the amazing thing about helping your team communicate with each other is that it feels like you're making no progress at all, like things aren't happening, and then all of a sudden, like people just start working together, things start happening, problems getting start getting solved uh, proactively. And I think Sarah has a really good roadmap of how she incorporated the TKI model in allowing her team to understand how to better communicate. And a, a mistake a lot of leaders make that she avoided is you have this problem, like, all right, let's get together and let's have a team meeting or let's do a workshop and let's focus on developing this skill. The problem with conflict and, and trust issues is that if your team doesn't trust each other, they're probably not going to be communicating super effectively in a group setting at first. You'll have a lot more success first doing the hand-to-hand -hand combat. And what I mean by that is setting aside time to get to know each person individually, understand their perspective of a problem, and help take time to understand what's most important for them, what they see as causing a lot of the downstream problems that the team is facing. Just taking that time to listen and be empathetic, keep an open mind and assume the best intentions. What you'll find out is that everybody's trying hard. Like, there are very few situations where somebody's showing up to work and just wants to be toxic. Like that's generally, fortunately, that's generally not what happens. But there are there are situations that we have to have to address. But generally not. Like generally, people have very good intentions. They're just something that's getting in the way that's creating the space where they don't feel confident or they don't trust their team enough to to be open with communication and, and do their best work. So those one to one meetings have a a big impact. The second piece I'll say is that lack of accountability is the number one thing that causes trust issues on teams. If you are a leader and you're not holding people accountable for what they say they do, your team is not going to trust you as a leader. So when things happen, conflict arise, they're not going to want to bring it to you. But they're also it's also going to cause mistrust on the team as well. So that's something for you to be be thinking through. <laughs> Do <laughs> do